Welcome to the Tuttle and Klein Show. What are you doing, man? Looking at your red shirt. You rojo. Yeah. It's, 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 I'm still getting used to you not wearing all black all the time. I know things change a little bit, but yeah, it's still do. it's still like ninety five percent black. Yeah, I would expect it to be. I'm like the NBA. <laughs> How that's, we? Not, that's not racist. That's just a raw stat. It's the stats. Uh, speaking of stats, I just saw I was watching the news, Kev. Okay. And uh, a little blurb came uh, on there. Uh, crime, national crime is down uh, last month for the first time in years. I had heard that. You heard that too? Yeah, I did, actually. I, I was thinking, though, uh, and maybe I'm jaded. I was thinking it's because everything's already been stolen. <laughs> you know? Now, do they make the distinction, though? Is it property crime or is it violent crime? It's it's just all, everything. All, all crime across the board, huh? Across the board, down uh, last month for the first time in, since like 2020 or something like that. And all, on a national average, I mean, crime is still pretty rampant in Houston, right? Well, crime is rampant uh, anywhere and everywhere. Yeah. And I, I don't believe any numbers that the government's churning out. They got busted last uh, week because uh, they'd been under uh, reporting the unemployment stuff. I saw that too. There's just a bunch of fucking criminals. All of them are. <laughs> I know we usually don't start the, uh, I know we usually don't start this quickly with our, our regular segments, but I, I, it plays right into my be honest for you. Be honest. Be honest. Be honest. Do you believe anything the government tells you? Absolutely not. You can't. You cannot. They're, I mean, they, they've, it's it's all propaganda. See, that's the one. But regardless of uh, of what you think of him, that's the one great thing about Trump is he has them so fucking out of their minds that he's exposed what the government and the government leaders and the media, who are basically just their puppets. I mean, there's it's it's all propaganda now. When we were young, yeah, let, let me talk to the youngins right now. Uh, they actually used to have journalism, investigative journalism, and they would go and bust, you know, big, powerful entities and organizations. That doesn't happen anymore. It's all propaganda. There actually is a, a cool television program called Investigate TV, and it's hosted by Lee Zurich and Tisha Powell. And it gets back to the roots of what journalism was. It's just presenting facts, telling stories. No God, opinion, I mean, no nothing. Imagine that. I mean, I mean, you know, growing up, yeah, we had kind of a, a left wing, you know, lean, just a small little lean. Uh -huh. But and they tried to, you know, play it off when they were accused of it. Now it's just wide open. Okay, now let me ask you something because I know you're a big Trump fan, and you just said that he he riles the other side. When they do fact check his speeches, they say he lies a lot. Well, so of course they, they have to. Okay, so he's not lying; they're lying. No, they, Kev, they are, they, his, see, and, and everybody should have been on their toes when they realized for four years, they never reported anything positive that he had done, nothing. And that should immediately raise flags. And, you know, I was listening to Joe Rogan and Joe Rogan's a Democrat. And he said that was the a big thing for him is they have absolutely nothing good to report on him. So it's obviously slanted. The, everything that they they say is is in question. It's all it's all, it, it, it turns out to be lies later, and they never admit to it. You never see them say, "Hey, we got that wrong," or you know, they never do that. Right. No, I know they never do that. So uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I wouldn't, I, Kev. The thing that the things that that uh, Trump cites in his speeches and everything like that and the debate that that's raw statistics fact. OK, you know, yeah, I, 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 you know, I'm sure that he you know, and he, he's 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 a, an ego. He's a narcissist. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure he fluffs up things a little bit. But uh, I, I would believe him way before I would believe any of the the uh, uh, poor excuses for hairdos. Uh, haircuts that you see on your screen. They're they're just, they're straight up propaganda. They're not allowed to do anything but what's on the teleprompter. And, okay. that, is, and that is big government. You're in, we control you. 
listen to what we say. You can't think for yourselves. We are the facts and only the facts. I mean, that, just just that right there where they say, "Hey, we're the fact checkers," and we'll tell. We know the truth. You're 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 telling us that you are omniscient, omnipresent, and you know the truth. You know, you're, yeah. you're you're God. Basically, they're saying we're God, so we can fact check everything. Well, they they can make or break a candidate. I mean, they're kingmakers. I mean, well, it, 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 up until 2016. No, I mean, I had to ask that question because that is the common phrase that you hear around Donald Trump is he just lies. Uh, but, yeah. but, but, but you answer the you, question. What you also see is they project everything. Of course, they they're do. they're doing on him. Like that whole fucking Russian bullshit that there was going on when he was president, they were the ones colluding with Russia. You know, okay. Uh, you know, anything that you see them project is shit that they're doing, that uh, they're putting, yeah, that they're projecting there. So, and and I don't want to make this all about politics, but because we've gone here, did they create January sixth? Oh, heck yeah, dude! The FBI it was an FBI false flag. Okay, look it up. FBI false flag. They were telling people, go in, go in, go in. You know, they, they, they thought, they, they, you know, people, official like people were telling them to go into the Capitol. You know, okay. totally set up. And they tried to bury that. You know, they, they buried that in the bullshit hearings. I mean, it's a have complete FBI false flag. Okay. Absolute. I'm yeah. glad I asked it. I'm glad I asked. Yeah. And anything you see out there that's like uh, it's Antifa is dressed up as uh, MAGA supporters and they're doing racist chants and Ku Klux Klux Klan stuff. I mean, it's all bullshit now. It's all bullshit. Okay. well, speaking of uh, bullshit, and I don't want to taint your answer here, but that was my next uh, (laughs) that was my next uh, be honest, be honest. Does the NFL really need preseason football? Uh, yeah, it, Kev, the, the, the last, uh, 15 guys on the roster are pretty important. Okay. And, and you basically have 30 or 40 guys trying to be that last 15. Okay. So, I, I mean, they could probably do it, you know, uh, more on the down low, but why would they do that? Because it makes us sh- still makes a shit ton of money. But then you look at what happened to the San Francisco 49ers in their last game of preseason. Brock Purdy goes down with an injury. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Three of their other starters go down with an injury, you know. Yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, uh, essentially, sh- and, and you want a preseason because uh, another thing about that, and what you know, piggybacking what you're saying about uh, 49ers is you want to get your starters a little bit of a feel before it's go time. Okay, so because yeah. because a football season, yeah, it's 17 games. Uh, I mean, it's just 17 games. Yeah, I, it, I mean, every week is important. Every week's important in the NFL. Uh, I, I mean, in baseball, you really don't need a spring training because, you know, you can spend the first month, you know, April getting into the groove. Do you answer my question without even me having to ask it? Why doesn't college have preseason football games? And that's because they don't have to make roster cuts. No. Everybody that goes off to, for the team is on the team. So okay, exactly. that, that answered that. So I didn't even need to ask it. Okay, cool. Thank you. You're welcome. All Glad right. to help you. Anything Thanks. else? No, those were the only two. Uh, I have one. Yeah. Um, be honest. Uh, what are your thoughts about someone who didn't wash their hands after using a public restroom? They should be uh, they should be uh, punished uh, harshly, very harshly. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, a, a night in jail wouldn't be too bad. OK, it's disgusting because I've always thought that I was like, ah, you know, I've always said that. I mean, you're fucking dirty, nasty, you know. Yeah, but but I never I never said anything because you know you know I, we 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 kind of had to keep our nose clean because we were kind of in the public eye. But I, I, the other day I actually just said something. Did you really? Yeah, he was, the, the dude, dude just went and pissed and walked straight out the door, and I, uh, before the door shut, I said, "Oh, go spread those germs," because that's what they do. And he pushed the door open, and, and he said, "What?" And I said, "You." Why don't you fucking wash your hands, man? Oh, damn, dude. <laughs> Did he bow up? No, he didn't bow up, dude. I'm Did he wash his hands? Yeah. Uh huh. Did no, he wash he, his hands? No, he rolled his eyes and, and walked away. Oh, wow. Yeah. I, but yeah, hey, that, again, strike that one up for, uh, you know, you're, you're, we're getting that age, you know, yeah. we continue <laughs> to get that age. Just, I, just don't give a fuck. Because <laughs> all I was thinking was, you know, this guy right here, he could go and touch something, and then my kids touch it or something like that. Exactly. 
Yeah. And then, and, and then you've, you've affected my kids. Yeah. You know, I selfishness, w- which brings me to, uh, you know, I was, I had a long conversation with my mom yesterday. How is Dottie? Dottie's uh, she's 88 now, Kev. Wow. 88 years old. So, um, and I feel bad for it. You know, she lives in, in, in Palm Street, Palm Springs. Okay. In uh, California. Uh huh. And the, you know, they shoved the COVID up their ass there. And she's just, oh, she's just so worried about doing anything now at the age of 88. She said, you know, basically a death sentence. She thinks if she gets COVID. Right. Yeah. So she wears, you know, mask and gloves and, you know, has people deliver and put it outside the door and she grabs it with a mask on and a, her gloves on and washes everything. I mean, she's she's in that full fucking Howard Hughes mode, man. Oh, th- that's the way uh, my mother-in-law was when it first started, you know, back in 2020, 2021. Uh, now that has subsided. Uh, but yeah, the, 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 the fear was always there at the beginning. Yeah. But I just now- feel, I just feel bad. It's completely taken over. She's a prisoner. Yeah. She's, she's a prisoner in, in California. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, that, that doesn't want to go anywhere. I mean, she used to be very active, you know, she, I mean, she, she even worked at this coffee shop in, into her mid eighties. No kidding. Yeah. Now she just, you know, she just doesn't. Uh, you know, I, oh, she, man. She, yeah, she runs the throw the trash out, does, you know, doesn't touch any. I mean, it's it reminds me of you. <laughs> I was ahead of my time. Yeah, you were <laughs> before COVID. Kev was that guy. <laughs> Very uh, much so. <laughs> uh, Kev, I got another uh, be honest if we can do it. Yeah, why not? Um, Have you ever be honest? Have you ever picked your nose and ate it? No. Never have. Come on. It's perfectly normal. Never have. Uh, and, and I learned early on that you didn't do that. And the reason I learned that is because there was a young girl named Karen on our bus. And uh, she used to do it all the time. And it, the kids were merciless against her. Merciless. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I was. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, and I'll tell you something a little later, an interesting story. But you know, uh, there was a guy at the pool. We were goofing around. Uh-huh. And I asked, you know, his, uh, he saw like one of the little boys over there, pick the nose and eat it, like probably four or five years old. Yeah. And he's like, oh, that's disgusting. That's gross. Oh, that kid's going to grow up, be nasty. Dirt. And I was like, I looked at him, I go, oh, you, you never picked your nose ever one time and ever and ate it. And he's like, no. And I'm like, you're, you're fucking lying. Everybody's done that. And, uh, you know, I look over at another guy. You did it, didn't you? And he goes, yeah, oh, yeah. And then finally the guy admits to it. Yeah, probably maybe when I was five, six years old. And I was like, me, I've never done that. That's fucking gross. <laughs> you guys are gross. You guys are sick. I've never done You got, ugh. And I, you know, I, I got up and left. Because <laughs> I was like, I can't hang with you guys. But, you know, I was just, I was kidding with it. Of course, of course. Yeah, uh, no, I, I, uh, unless I did it before I was three years old, which I could have. But no, in it to my memory, I have never done that. Kev, yeah, I I never did it for one reason and one reason only. And that is in kindergarten. Uh-huh. There was a guy who picked his nose and ate it like in the one of the first three days of school. And from that moment on, everywhere he went, he was called Nostril Nugget Lover. Nostril Nugget Lover. And from what I've heard, that this continued up until sophomore or junior year of high school, until he moved. Like I said, kids latch on to something. You can't escape it. Karen. That's it. Karen, That's it. Yeah. She put up with that all through high school. Yeah. Uh, it, the NNL. NNL. Nostril nugget lover. And he was toast, man. He was he was toast. Now, in this day and age, you would use that as a brand and merchandise and stuff. Absolutely. You would embrace that and make that. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> you'd be like, you'd, 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 be like, you'd get to about fourth or fifth grade and be like, this shit isn't going away. How can I make some money? How can I monetize this? <laughs> for sure. <laughs> but I, I, I heard he became a, ended up being a really good athlete and everything like that. And people just could not let it go. Yeah. So he, he he finally moved uh, to another school. Just imagine if he were like to become an Olympic gold medalist and the gold booker. I mean, gold medal winner. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> can't escape it, man. Nope, you can't. You can't escape it. 
Although Audrey and Jonas's mom, Kathy, uh, she escaped. She uh, in kindergarten, she pooped her pants in kindergarten. That's okay. And she got away from it. Yeah, look at her. That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Eventually, you know, come high school, the guys are going to go, yeah, she shit herself, but that was 10 years ago. Come on. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, Kev, I had a movie idea. I want to run past you. Are you. Have you started it? I have not. I just. I was just taking out the trash, and I'm, <laughs> and I was walking out of the trash, and it just hit. It just ju- these these weird things just jump in my head. Uh huh. Okay. Here's here's the idea. Let me know what you think. Uh, you know, it, it's about a psychiatrist. He's got a patient that's just getting so annoyed with people, just absolutely annoyed with people that uh, he told the psychiatrist, "Yeah, you know, I I just have thoughts of stabbing." people uh that that annoy the shit out of me i just want to stab them so you know the psychiatrist is like whoa okay you know i better i better go like completely 180 on this one and said hey you know what anytime you have that thought and that feeling um just kill them with kindness you know you know Uh um so the patient agreed and then he decided he was going to name his knife kindness (laughs) Yeah. And that would be the title of the, of the movie, Kindness. Kindness. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> and it just turns out to be a serial killer movie, which we know sells big. Oh, I mean, you do anything to sell a serial killer, you're going to get an Academy Award. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you're going to get some box office, some good streaming numbers and shit like that because of our fascination with serial killers. And and uh, trust me, uh, as somebody who has uh, seen a psychiatrist regularly since 1995 uh, and uh, sees one for self-harm, uh, that is one of the questions that they ask you. Uh, now, is it self-harm or is it that you want to harm somebody else? I'm like, well, uh, no, it's just me. And they're like, OK, because it would be radically different if you said you wanted to harm other people. I'm like, I'm sure it would be. Yeah, see, that's the one thing that that I love about you, Kev. Yeah, you're you're suicidal and have those thoughts and shit like that, but you're never one of these assholes who are like, I got to kill other people before I off myself. No, that makes no sense to me whatsoever. Absolutely yeah. no sense to me whatsoever. Those are those are the the, the big assholes. I mean, it's like, it's like if you're if you're fucking miserable, that's fine. Leave other people out of it. Yeah, you're gonna be a selfish dick anyway, but you don't got to be a selfish dick to fifteen other families. You know, that, that, no, that's stupid. That's stupid. Yeah. And I, and I thought about your, I thought you're about your dad. Yeah. When I thought, you know, cause uh, for those unaware, Kevin's dad committed suicide back in 2005. Yep. Um, that's one thing I like about your dad is, you know, he didn't kill your mom. Nope. He didn't go, you know, go crazy. You know, cause he's a postal worker too, right? Yeah. He could have gone postal. Yeah. He, he didn't, he didn't grab a machine gun and just start shooting dogs and shooting people. And then, you know, killed himself or waited for the police to arrive and death by cop. He just went down to the basement, yeah. got an extension cord and took care of his business. It was between him and himself, you know? You know, honestly, one of the reasons why we think he did it is because he was no longer working for the post office. He didn't have that. Yeah, a lot of people get that way, man. They, they pushed him out because of his age. They pushed him out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and he I, didn't He didn't have any self-worth. I actually, Kev, one of our uh, big listeners, a big fan of our show, the entire time we were in Houston, every so often sends me a message asking if I'm okay and everything okay, you know, because he's like, hey, man, you know, because you were doing that for 26 years and you're not, is everything okay with the heads? I'm like, man, I'm better off than I ever was when I was doing that <laughs> shit. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I, yeah, I don't, I, I sleep in, I, I don't work for anyone. I mean, I'm, I'm great, dude. I'm great. Yeah. That, that's the, the lady that uh, I talked to this week on the Fuzzy Mike. That is one of the things we talk about because her husband committed suicide after he got out of the workforce and it's, it, you know, it becomes like our identity, what we do for a living. And she said, it only is with guys. Women don't care what yeah, they do for I, a living. They don't ever ask, Hey, what do you do? What's the first I, question we ask? What do you do? I, I yeah. I, for, and you said this to me, I, you were the first person I told, Hey man, they're not re-signing me. I'm done. Today was my last show. Uh-huh. And the first thing you texted back, go is trust me. You'll feel relief very soon. <laughs> yeah. And as I was driving home, man, I was just like, God, I'm so relieved, man. Yeah. And I never thought for one second, what am I going to do? Maybe because I already knew what I was going to do. You know? Right. Yeah. 
maybe that's it. Maybe, you know, cause I, 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 I had a passion for, for, for trading and then, you know, uh, futures trading and shit like that. So I already had a plan. I knew what I was going to do. Maybe that's it. Well, you had that number one. Number two is the industry was not the same when we got out as it was when we got in. It just, yeah. it, it wears on you. It was just not the same. And so, yeah, I mean, it, it, it was a blessing, bro. Yeah. And I, I didn't, you know, I was like, what are you talking about, dude? I just, and, then, and then seriously, I got on, uh, Got on uh, six ten, uh, on the loop, and right when right when I like passed the uh, chimney rock on fifty nine, uh-huh. I just felt this whole like relief washing over me. Yeah, I was like, God, man, I don't have to do that shit anymore. Yeah, I just ran into a uh, a television personality here in Springfield yesterday. She retired after thirty years on the uh, uh, as on the air TV, and I was like, you know do you miss it? And she goes, no. I'm like, what don't you miss about it? The, uh, the constant nagging and the, you're never good enough. And she's like, that's a lot of it. Yeah. She said, that's a lot of it. So she's selling houses now and making eight times more than she ever did. Yeah. I, it was the same thing. Cause you know, shortly after me, they let go of CJ in the afternoon. They let her go. Yeah. They let her go. Oh, I thought she left to go get married. Oh no, no, no. She, she, they let her go. Um, you know, cause you know, the, the new, the new manager wants to bring his own people in. Yeah. Uh, and they, they let her go. And, you know, I, I reached out and I said, Hey, I know you're feeling a sting right now. Trust me. You will feel really. And she just immediately got happy too. immediately. Yeah. Take our word for it. We lived it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't know they let her go. That's unfortunate. She was really cool. Oh, one of the nicest people ever. Yeah. Talented like, too. Like, like legitimately nice. And yeah. uh, her, her and Seth uh, have a new baby now. And that's what Trish told me. Yeah, they they have a new baby. So yeah, Seth, uh, her her husband, uh, you know, he's a baseball coach and played played some professional ball. Mm -hmm. I played for. I think he played for the Italian national team too, didn't he? Uh, if there were a national team that he played for, it would be uh, Italian. That, well, yeah, that's back, <laughs> yeah, that's back when they had uh, national teams for softball and baseball. They don't have that shit anymore. No, I think you're right though. He did play for them, yeah. but they have break dancing anyway. <laughs> Kev, I, I um I uh was in Kroger and uh I gotta tell you this story. Um and I'm walking past uh you know the service area um to get to produce. Okay. And I, you just this you can hear there's this Karen, you know, this typical oh, no. middle-aged white woman. Uh-huh. Just going off about a, a price discrepant, uh, discrepancy on what they advertised and what the price was now. And, you know, this poor service manager just said, hey, that expired. And it says even right here, it expired, expired yesterday, you know. So the computer automatically puts the price back to where it was. And she's just freaking out. It's, it's Kev, maybe it's a buck 18. Oh, that much. Okay. Yeah, I and thought it was she, like 15 cents. <laughs> she was she was outraged and just going crazy. And uh, the, I, these two Hispanic dudes were over by the, uh, the the vending machines where the lotto cards are and everything like that. And where you can pour, you know, those places where you can pour your change in and it gives yeah. you dollars. And and uh, one of them goes, yeah, yeah she's just mad. There's no white history month. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm laughing. I thought that was funny. The, you know, the guy was funny. But as I was walking to produce, it got me thinking. I was like, you know, what would White History Month look like? You know, hmm. what would it, it look like? It would probably just be like daily features of Wall Street Ponzi schemers and <laughs> military snipers and <laughs> NFL kickers and. No, oh, NFL kickers. <laughs> Although uh, Reggie Roby uh, was uh, was an African American kicker. He look how a... look how far back you had to go. <laughs> right? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> it's like it's like uh, you know Dallas was asking me. He's like, "Hey, Dad, who was the last white cornerback in the NFL?" And I as I had to think about, it, I had to look it up. It was uh, Seahorn, Jason Seahorn from the Giants. Oh wow, that far back. Last starting white until some kid got drafted recently. I would have wouldn't have been able to do that without looking it up. Yeah, Seahorn. He married Angie Harmon. Yes, he did. Are they still married? I'm Good not sure. Question. I, I don't know. That, I didn't go that far with it. Okay. See, I, the thing I like now is 
you don't even have to click on anything anymore. You can just Google something and it just immediately shows up your question right there. How did the Karen episode end? Did she get her at dollar eighteen? I have no idea. I'd, I'd walked away after the after the Hispanic dude uh, dropped the uh, the White History Month line. I was like, that's fucking hilarious. Well, Karen would have blown a gasket if she was with us on Saturday. Why? I, actually, Friday night because we went to this liquor store in uh, in Lee's Summit. Uh, and- it, she wouldn't have really blown a gasket because it ended up being our, in our favor. Uh, but uh, Trish walked around the store and was looking for the biggest discounted item in the store. And there was one that was marked $55 off. And so <laughs> she picked it up, brought it to me, and she goes, $55 off. I'm like, no, that can't be right. And the guy behind the counter is like, no, nah, it's really not right. But the digital pricing thing that we use, Puts it in, and we got to honor it. So I got a hundred and thirty-two dollar bottle of vodka uh, of uh, 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 tequila for sixty-five bucks. Wow! Yeah. Don't you just feel like, oh my god, that's just the most. It, it, it'll, you know what, Kev? Huh. It'll, it'll taste better too. Oh my god, it's delicious. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a fourteen ninety-two Don Julio limited edition Primavera Reposado. I've always thought that the best beer I ever drank is the free beer. <laughs> yep uh, uh kevin it reminds me we, we were using the term blow a gasket yes i remember this like really really hot girl a couple of years ago she was like mad about something and i can't remember what it was it was a golf course really hot uh, right you know we were all waiting on the first tee and she goes oh my god if this group in front of us does not increase their pace i'm gonna blow a gasket and I walked up to her and I say, hi, my name's Gasket. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Very funny. Did she laugh? Oh, yeah. Of course. Of oh, course. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We actually, I actually like hung out with her a little bit. Oh, uh, cool. Shortly thereafter. That didn't go anywhere. And the answer to the question is, even if I wasn't named Gasket. <laughs> Very nice. Very uh, nice. Uh, Kev, kind of a little solemn today. I'm a oh, little no, solemn. What? Why? What happened? Um, I don't know if this has happened to you yet. Uh, a guy I hung out with when I was young, he passed away last week. I just found out about it. Oh, no. Yeah. Have you had anybody? I mean, we're getting to the age, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I actually have. Uh, I played college baseball with him. Oh, what happened, man? Uh, one of them went to the pros. One of them pitched uh, nine years in the pros. Who? Uh, Will Brunson. Did he ever make the show? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he made the show. Wow. Yeah, okay. I, caught, I caught his no-hitter at uh, Southwest Texas State. No shit. Yeah. yeah. Which is now Texas State, of course. Right. Yep, absolutely. It's where Audrey and Jonas go. Yeah, well, yeah. Audrey's the athletic director. She doesn't go there. Right, exactly. She's uh, the but... associate athletic director. Anyway, the, the, the guy that uh, passed away last week that I, I grew up with, uh, I, I was just remembering back, uh, you know, at the age of 16 or 17, he started dealing drugs. Oh. And we were all we, we were all worried about him. You know, all, you know, we were like, hey, man, you know, that doesn't end well. Hey, you're either jail or dead. We you know, don't do that. Mm-hmm. And he just, you know, in one ear and out the other ear. And then he uh, he started buying like all of our concert tickets. <laughs> and, and he would he would rent the hotel room and buy the booze for the post concert uh, party. Yeah. So at that point, we told him it would be okay if he continued the other drugs. <laughs> <laughs> Did you, ever, did you ever ask him if he had any Earth, Wind, and Fire tickets? <laughs> Damone. Well, when are those Earth, Wind, and Fire tickets coming in? Earth, Wind, and Fire? Jeez, uh, I haven't heard anything. But... Do you remember those, Kev? You, you, uh, you know, you're, when you're a teenager or early 20s or whatever, you go to a concert and then there would be the big, the big party at the uh, hotel afterwards, the post-concert uh, party? I never got invited to those. Yeah, I was ne- never on that guest list. I'm so sorry, man. It's okay. How were they? They were great. You would have loved them. <laughs> Everybody's in a great mood from a good concert. Everybody had a nice little buzz, you know. Yeah. You know, the uh the uh the the hot women who couldn't get backstage, those you know still had energy. 
they still had some energy. <laughs> sorry you missed those, man, and sorry I bought them up. That's okay. I, I love living vicariously through your exploit. <laughs> wasn't it, did you guys, when you were in teen, I mean, did you have the hotel parties at all? Did you guys, you didn't party at all. It's really tough. No, I, I didn't. Uh-uh. And I didn't know about hotel parties. No, I mean, I, I knew I knew that parties went on at people's houses, but I'd never heard of anything about a hotel party. No. Mm -mm. So sorry, man. That's OK. I get okay. it. And maybe, maybe it wasn't, you know, it was where I grew up. It was it was a thing, you know, because you would we would the the, uh, the concert would happen at Market Square Arena downtown mm -hmm. and nobody wanted to drive, you know, 30, 40 minutes afterwards uh, after the concert. So we would just like rent, a, you know, three or four rooms and then you'd have the sleep in room or you'd have like 30 people sleeping in one room. <laughs> <laughs> and then you'd have the party room that was just trash. So trashed you could never even sleep there. So no, I, I understand the concept. I, I uh, just don't was unaware of them if they happened. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Cal. In the loo. Yeah, what we do to, in the party room, we take all the bedding and pillows and we put it in the sleeping room because we knew that if you know. Sure. And we wanted to be ready later. So now, was sleeping going on in the sleeping room? I cannot answer that question. Okay. Because <laughs> I never went to the sleeping room. <laughs> <laughs> For me, it was just called room. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> Very cool. Very good. Hey, hey, hey Kev. Yes, sir. Hey, and, and your mother-in-law probably would think, did you rehearse that? Is that scripted? With that, none of that was scripted. Okay? That was complete. We had no idea we were going to talk about that. We were riffing. Yep. All of this is riffing. Um, I do have a story. You know, as you know, my the extent of my my social life right now is, you know, the occasional, um, you know, lady. Yes. Or ladies that drop by. Uh huh. And then you know, hanging out at the pool. Got it. You know, um, and <clears throat> I got a story. And I, you know, I, I sometimes I just go. I think I go too far. You never, but, but you know me. I just, I all I care about is making people laugh. You it's know, the that. laugh. Yeah, I just, I'm going for the laugh. Uh huh. I get it. You've and, always been uh, that way. Yeah, I mean, and it, it's cost me some relationships. <laughs> we've we've talked about that. Where it's like, is it? 24 7 that you do this shit do you ever have anything serious to say the answer is no <laughs> uh but you know this guy asked me a, a simple question and it just turned in this whole big thing um <clears throat> you know he's, he's like hey you seem to have it together you know I, I i need to get my life together do you do you know of any good self-help books <laughs> And I said, yeah, but I'm, I'm not going to tell you. I mean, why would you start the process in the hole? <laughs> he got pissed. Hey. Th then the other guy, you know, the, the second guy, you know, he had to step in and explain that it was a joke. That yeah. what I was saying was a joke, you know, because some people don't get that. Right, right. I mean, obviously you get it. He, he wants books on self-help and he wants my help. I'm like, no, you got to help yourself. <laughs> yes, exactly. You dig it? Well, I, I'm very fortunate because there was an explainer guy there that got it and explained it to him, and then there, there was a chuckle. Okay. And then we're gonna start, I, I, you know, start talking with the uh, explainer guy. Uh huh. And uh, you know, we were talking about you know where we're from and everything, and he says he says he's from Michigan, and I you know I asked him what part of Michigan, and because Michigan is looks like a hand. Yes. He holds his hand up and, you know, like there's Detroit, Ann Arbor and all that. So he's pointing around to his hand, you know, using his hand as a map because Michigan looks like a hand. Right. And then I said, gee, I'm sure glad you're not from Florida. <laughs> <laughs> and initially he didn't get that. So self-help guy had to jump in and go, because Florida's shaped like a dick. <laughs> I mean, Kev, you could do the comparison. I mean, there's there's the Michigan. It looks like a hand. You know, you got that right to put on the screen. And then there's Florida. Yeah. Yeah. Two balls up there in the pan handle. And there's the dick hanging down. Right there. And it's pissing out of Miami. There you go. <laughs> Miami's the urethra of our country. Dude, that's not really even like Dennis Miller-esque 
uh, comedy that you would have to research that or explain it. That's so obvious. Are these people not I, educated? Well, I, I'm going to let you because it continued. I'm going to I'm going to oh. let you judge for yourself here. Oh, okay. So, you know, the three of us got, you know, got talking about careers and everything like that. And, you know, I, I told him I was a radio guy and, you know, one of them remembered second date update and was a big fan. And by the way, you know, I told him about the podcast and he says, hello to you, Kevin. He was a big fan of you. Oh, hi. He's, he's one of those that, that, uh, yeah, Kevin's laugh is just makes you want to laugh. He's one of those guys. <laughs> oh, cool. Kevin Klein has the greatest laugh in history. He's one of those guys. Oh, he'll like the podcast then. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> then the Michigan guy said that just like me, he does something creative too. <clears throat> I was like, well, what do you do? And he goes, well, you know, I'm a, I'm a club DJ. Okay. And I said, uh, that's not really creative. All you're doing is playing other people's music. <laughs> <laughs> I'm and sure he appreciated that. That's how Tim loses friends. <laughs> no matter how many times I said, I'm just playing, man. I'm just goofing with you. You could tell he was a little butt sore by that. Wow. Come so, on, man. yeah. That's that, humor. I, exactly. That, 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 all I'm doing is looking for the next laugh. I mean, and dude, so, we some know people you get it, some don't. We know you build a dance floor. We know you get the girls to take their clothes off. We know that's your job. We're <laughs> kidding you. We're kidding. Yeah, you got a great life, buddy. Yeah. I mean, you literally do nothing but stand there and bob your head up and down, and you got a good chance of walking out of this place with two or three of those pretty nice-looking women. Yeah. Shut the fuck up, okay? Relax. <laughs> I get it, man. Yeah, definitely. Right in the same boat with you, bro. See, you and I seem to have been running into that same problem of, you know, you, you don't want to get too close to neighbors. No, no, not at all. Although I haven't talked to Bob recently. He, he's pretty now, much, I, I guess he's which, learned enough about me that he doesn't have to bother anymore. Which one is Bob? Is Bob the, hey, I don't know you and never met you. Will you move me? No, no, that or was is Bob the, it was Bob like, can you mow my 8,000 square mile lawn? No, that's Drew. Bob's the uh, guy that spent 63 years at, uh, at UPS. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So he waves now, but he doesn't. Oh, oh, you get, oh that's, that's good. Yeah. That's how you want to keep that shit, man. Definitely. You know, upward head nod. Uh-huh. Or e even the downward head nod if you're, you know, <laughs> over 60 years old. <laughs> uh, otherwise, it's the upward head nod or maybe a sup, man. Yeah. yeah. Sup, man. That's all you have. That's it. That's it. I don't want any neighbor relationship that goes past sup man. <laughs> but, you know, because I hang out at the pool and have a cocktail or bring my kids to the pool. You know, I, yeah, I can't be a total dick when they come over and want to talk to me. Yeah. Yeah. But so, keep them at arm's length, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You, we've talked about that. You don't want you don't want neighbors close because, you know, they're always there. If things yeah. go things go bad, they're always there. Yeah, definitely. It's um, you know, like like this lady that uh um <clears throat> that uh, she's pretty, very good looking lady. Mm -hmm. That you know, she her and I hung out a little bit, you know. I would <laughs> I, I let her I let her in. Okay. You know, and one thing leads to another, you know how it goes. And then, you know, it's shortly thereafter it's like, hey, you know, we'd probably be a good couple. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah and then i have to have that conversation it's like hey i'm not good at that <laughs> i mean you can see the apartment right here and believe it or not i've made millions and this is all i have to show for it <laughs> so i'm not good at that shit so i'm not in any hurry yeah uh it's a you know am i completely closed off forever no i mean if cupid it organically shoots an arrow in my ass. That's cool. But otherwise, I ain't looking. Yeah. I, I was going to ask you that, but you answered the question right there. I mean, if the perfect opportunity, the perfect situation showed itself, you'd be open to that, right? Oh, uh, Kev, I, I, I've always been a romantic. I've always, well, here's, I guess here's the thing. This is what has been assessed. You know, uh, somebody that, uh, you know, had way too many conversations with that ended up being a psychiatrist, like a therapist. 
gave me this feedback and just said, Hey, you, you know, Tim, you, um, you love falling in love, but you, you don't like maintaining it. You get uncomfortable and then you start doing stupid things and saying stupid things and everything like that. And I'm looking back at all my failed relationships. I'm like, Holy shit. You're fucking right. Wow. You know? Yeah. 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 I was like, damn, man. And, you know, I was like, you got that conversation, you know, you got that from maybe 15, 20 minutes of a conversation with me. And he's like, yep, that was you know, easy. You know who else is like that? Now, she doesn't, uh, she doesn't like, and if this is a wrong term to use, I apologize, but she doesn't self-sabotage her relationships. She picks guys that she picks out guys that sabotage her relationship. Uh, Pamela Anderson. Pamela oh. Anderson loves falling in love. Same with JLo. So there's two right on the right on the horizon for you there Timmy make your move nah nah if uh if it was 1999 yeah <laughs> okay all right yep all right but i've seen too much since then okay but but no no i mean you know uh yeah i mean i'm open to it but i'm not yeah uh, Kev, the, the the more that i um you know spend time solo uh -huh. the more i like it <laughs> i just i like it yeah one of my big fears used to be uh you know i didn't want to die alone uh-huh but now i'm pretty sure like audrey or jonas or dallas or timmy would you know hang out with me a little bit yeah we just had this conversation over the weekend with uh with our friends uh bob and kim and uh they have two children and we asked you know which one will take care of you in your old age the way that you're taking care of your mom now bob and he goes oh it would be brad he goes brianna not that that's not her style, but I'm like, well, at least you got somebody. We don't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. You know, we got nothing. I mean, uh, whoever, uh, whichever one of you or your wife, you know, uh, Trish, uh, whichever one of you dies first wins. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm the I, I'm the leader in the clubhouse on that one. By the way. Yeah, you'll probably you'll probably pull that one off. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, boy, I'm, try I'm trying to think of it. You know, if 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 I was dying, Audrey, Jonas, Dallas, and Timmy, it may be a little too early to make that assessment because Dallas and Timmy are still young. Uh huh. But I'd probably say that Audrey would uh, pitch in the effort to make sure she was there. I think all four of your kids would. I think I, so. I too. do. I think all four of your kids would. Yeah. Uh, although, Timmy, uh, Timmy although, might try and bench press the casket, but. <laughs> <laughs> I got this, Dad. Just get up, Dad. This whole thing is just a charade. What the hell? <laughs> uh, Kev, let's do this. Uh, let's talk about the rabbit holes we both jumped in last week. Rabbit hole of the week. All right, what was yours? I have two. Uh, so we've uh, three out of the last five weekends have driven up to Kansas City to visit our friends and to go look for houses. Uh, but, so, um, so, uh, I've been looking for a lot of houses lately, but, uh, every time we go up there, we listen to either Dateline, uh, podcast or 2020 podcast. And so I remember all the names of the people who are being investigated or who were murdered. And then I go look at them. So I, I have spent a lot of time looking up, uh, stories that we listen to on, uh, on the ride. Oh, that, yeah, I always do that follow-up stuff too. Yeah. Don't you? You have to. Uh, again, just to have that gap in knowledge, you hate that. Yeah. And I have to know. And now we have the ability to just look it up. Yeah. Like they were doing this one, uh, the kid, the, the, the Lords of Chaos. They were in Florida and uh, it was a group of uh, seven high schoolers. And they were all led by this one kid named Kevin Foster. And they made this Kevin Foster guy out to sound like he was the most charismatic like like Jim Jones leader type of thing. So I had to get a look at him. Dude looked like a minger. <laughs> I'm like, they were following this guy? But yeah. <laughs> uh, a minger, by the way, is a British term for an ugly person. Yes. yes. Ke Ke Kevin used to have this thing about 20 years ago where he used to like look up, uh, was it minger.com or something like mingers that? Mingers.com. Yeah, mingers.com. <laughs> ugly people. <laughs> and be fascinated with them. <laughs> and if we just gave you a rabbit hole uh, to, you know, we apologize. <laughs> the yeah. British are horrible people. 
Oh, they're horrible. We would never do anything like that. Never. Although there, there is a an American version, uglypeople.com. <laughs> so yeah <laughs> and i don't funny. look at that one because i feel that i might be a, a person on there and i don't know if i want to <laughs> know that <laughs> that that would just have you rolling into a downward spiral that you couldn't recover from <laughs> yeah if yeah. i if i ever knew that i was on uglypeople.com hey mom let me borrow dad's cord <laughs> <laughs> yeah that would be tragic uh-huh. um <laughs> um my rabbit hole, and I don't know if you 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 I th- you probably know this. I got caught in um, uh, Pittsburgh Pirates pitcher from the seventies, Doc Ellis, mm-hmm. and his no hitter when he was tripping on acid LSD. <laughs> yep, <laughs> totally remember that. Yeah, I was just looking up everything, and you know he was he he was telling the story, you know that he wasn't didn't think he was going to pitch that night and suddenly his his girlfriend was like hey you're pitching and he just dropped a bunch of just a whole boatload of acid and he went to the uh ballpark and they were playing the San Diego Padres in San Diego California the Pittsburgh Pirates and he says he couldn't even see the batter oh jeez and he had his catcher wear reflective tape so he could see the signals Okay. And that's the only way you can see the signals. And all he zoned in on was the catcher's mitt. That's it. Wow. That's all he zoned in on. I mean, he walked a bunch of people. He like, he like walked uh, eight people. Uh-huh. I'd imagine so. And loaded the bases and everything like that a couple times. But, you know, it was a no-no, man. No hitter, no runs on acid. You see how basically two things happen right there. Number one, he just simplified the game. No overthinking, no, oh my God, I got to get this pitch here and this. He just simplified the game. And number two, it's the inner game of tennis. You will do your best when you are no longer concerned about the outcome. He just wanted to get through the game. Yeah. Uh, Kevin, speaking of which, with my my trading, that's what helped me too. Where I I would just... No. (laughs) No. Just, (laughs) Just zoning in on one thing. Like, forget about the noise and what anybody's saying or you know what anybody's doing i just zone in when i see my setup form i'd hop it Uh uh-huh otherwise i don't do a damn thing yeah until i see the uh s p 500 es e minis i I see that chart do you know either one of my m reversals or one of my w reversals you know basically it's double top double bottom until i see that i don't do shit Wow. Okay. Nothing. But you simplified the game for yourself. That's all I look for. Yeah. And once I see that, I put an order in and I have a mechanical system. I'm going to take half off at this much. I'm going to take a quarter of it off at, you know, a little further. And I'm going to let that last little piece run all day if I continue to run in that direction. All right. And that's all I do. Wow. Simple. It's just simple. I I mean... (laughs) Uh, for you, it's simple. For me, it would be a foreign language. But yeah. oh, like I'm so sorry if I went into the woods on that one. I'm so sorry. No, I mean, well, it that actually simplified it for me, though. You know, like if I I, I don't I I don't know what you do. I mean, it's just it's way over my head. Um, but if you're giving me symbols like a double M, like a McDonald's or a Whataburger, yeah, then I know something's in play. I either Whataburger when it looks like it's going to reverse from going down to up. Or on McDonald's, if it's looking like it's going to go from up to down. There you go. See? And then I let the market give me what it's going to give me. And, you know, about 40% of the time, it's going to stop me out for a small loss. And about 60% of the time, I'm going to make a profit off of it. Nice. And that's it. Nice. And as long as those 60%, you know. Outweigh the 40. Outweigh the 40. uh, I can keep the lights on. (laughs) You're in business. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And, that, and that's, that's a program. All it is. That's a program that you developed, right? Uh yeah, pretty much. Yeah, uh, I, I noticed it uh, very early on. But you know, other people use it too. Like they used to call it like a one-two-three reversal, or you know, some you know, double top, uh, double bottom. Uh, I I did the M and the W. It just looks like an M and a W, and then go. Mm-hmm. So that's it. That's okay. all I do. All I look for. Okay. 
So you're, you're right. I mean, that Doc Ellis was just zoned in on the catcher's mitt the whole night, and he became the only pitcher in history to hit a no-hitter on LSD. <laughs> he also became the only pitcher in history to pitch to a green alien with four arms with Elvis Presley as the umpire. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> totally <laughs> and that's it congratulations to him way to go doc way to go doc way to go yeah um hey, uh speaking of the pittsburgh pirates uh uh i'm gonna be talking with burp Lylevin's son todd pretty soon shut your fucking mouth yeah and he was on the bench he he grew up with the pirates he know, he knows willie stargill and new Dave. oh Parker. my god he was he he knows the 1979 we are family yeah yeah with Phil Gardner, former uh, Astros manager, was on that team, played yep. infield. You had Kent DeColve, the foul, uh, the center field foul pole, the the, the skinny underhand submarine relief yeah. pitcher. Willie Stargell, Dave the Cobra Parker was on that team. Yeah, those are the stories I want to hear. I want to hear about the Cobra. Oh, yeah, Dave Parker. I used to love Bill, Dave Parker. Bill Maddox was third baseman. Exactly. Bill Matt, Mad Dog Maddox. Yeah. Yeah, at third base, and they won the uh, 1979 World Series. And if I remember correctly, Kev, that's the first time that uh, a city had won the Super Bowl and the World Series in the same year. Probably so. Pittsburgh Steelers and the Pittsburgh Pirates World Champions, they held them both. I'm sure Andy Hudak will give us the lowdown to make sure that we're accurate on that. So, Hootie, what's going on? Hi, buddy. He listens yeah. every week. I think that was it. And then um, I think um, the uh, Patriots – and the Red Sox became the next one. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, and makes maybe sense. there was one in between there. I don't know, man. See, the fortunate thing is, because you can just look it up, you would know it right away. Yeah, yeah, you would like, know it. Like, look at Kevin right here. He looks it up and tells us, you know, cities that have won world championships in the same year, and he runs it on the screen. Back when we were young, you couldn't do that. You literally had that pain in your brain of going, oh, my God, I have to know. And if you really wanted to know, you had to go to the library, grab an almanac, and yeah. look it up by hand yourself. By hand. Yeah. By on hand. a year by year. On, on a year by year. So, you, kids, you have no idea how easy you have it. You should get on your knees every day and thank the good Lord Jesus that you have search engines <laughs> and AI now and AI, which I love AI. Trish took a whole seminar last week, oh, a three day seminar on AI and uh, man, just the stuff that she's able to do after those three days. It's crazy. I love it. Yeah. She doesn't even have to talk to me anymore. She just yeah. says, Hey, say this to my husband. Oh, that's so funny. Kevin, I'd like to, you know, I, I've been playing around the last couple of days with, um, you know, uh, some, some uh, images that you can just make, just describe to chat GBT and uh -huh. it makes you images. Is that cool as hell? Well, it is unless you're Taylor Swift or uh, Jenna Ortega. Yeah. You're not like real that. happy with that right now. <laughs> yeah. And I'm going to, I'm going to put this up here right now, Kev, and, and this will be inserted in uh, chat GP, GBT. Um, make Tim Tuttle a 400 pound gorilla and Kevin Klein, an anteater, and we both have microphones in our hands or, you know, at our face. Okay. And then we'll, uh, it'll be posted right here with that. Oh, look at that. Oh, my gosh. Oh, look at AI. You're so crazy. Just by him saying that. Look at that. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they were making porn out of Taylor Swift, weren't they? Yeah. And uh, Jenna Ortega uh, was, uh, they, they were doing uh, nude uh, pictures of her. Yeah, well, yeah. It, it again, you won't know the difference anymore. Right. I mean, uh, the thing I'm worried about is uh Taylor Swift and Jen Ortega getting really really angry at AI and then AI just saying, "Well, I'm just going to replace you." <laughs> and you wouldn't know whose song was whose song and whose movie was whose movie cuz that's where we're going. So, <laughs> uh the US government uh, this is a true story. Read it last week. The U.S. government has commissioned a scientist in MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT, to uh, start recreating the human brain through AI. The, the goal with this is to eventually create 
pieces of the human brain to implant in the human brain and work for it. I, let me tell you this. I completely trust our government and their intentions with this. Right. I think they have nothing but the most benevolent intent here and nothing could ever go wrong. Yeah. So they're, uh, they're, they're saying that it, it will lead to immortality. Oh, yeah. It's, I, again, Kev, we, we, we've discussed this before. There, there are people among us, you know, younger people among us that'll live a thousand years. Yeah. No, we, we've read stories about that. that yeah. That's true with stem cell research, with AI now, with using what Elon Musk is trying to do with putting um, uh, like pacemaker type things in your brain to make it think for you. Uh, uh, you know, it just everything is just a matter of time. I mean, it's like when you, when I'm on social media and you know you hear about a celebrity scandal or a celebrity popping off or something like that, I'm just thinking, you're over in five years. You have yeah. no idea. You're over because that you know they're, they're eventually all you know to make a movie or a TV show, they're just going to enter the right shit into uh, AI and it's going to make entire movies, entire TV shows with very human looking, you know, characters and you're out of business and the studios are just going to be like, and the creative minds or whoever's going to be running this shit are just gonna be like, we don't have to worry about your bullshit attitude. <laughs> you're not going to come out of the trailer because you're not, you know, we didn't have enough Brown M&Ms in your little jar, you know? Yeah, oh, I, exactly. It's gone. It's over. So I, I just, I laugh whenever I see like celebrities just, you know, just full of themselves. But then what happens when AI does start getting attitude? Because you know it's eventually going to happen. We got we to gotta put a bullet in it. You know, what, uh, Kev, uh, what, what are you talking about? You know, Sarah Connor and, and Arnold Schwarzenegger told us exactly what we needed to do. <laughs> Terminator. You know, I, I sure hope that somebody that's cool, like somebody that's benevolent, is telling AI, hey, we're going to need a time machine. <laughs> really bad why don't you get to work on that yeah <laughs> i'll just sit here and make sure you have the energy i'll be shoveling coal just to make sure you have the energy to work on that shit yes sir because uh yeah we're gonna need it somebody's gonna need to so, to go back in time to 2021 uh you know and uh, unplug something <laughs> <laughs> Or explain to some, you know, some computer geek, hey, man, you're not. Hey, well, as soon as you press enter on August 17th, 2021, uh, this is what happens in the future. That's right. <laughs> so I, I'm here from the future uh, to tell you, please don't pl press enter. <laughs> yeah, and that AI thing is going to look just like Michael J. Fox. <laughs> Without the shaking. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh my God, mine's been out of control this morning. Oh, you're shaking. You're, you're shaking. Oh yeah, yeah. Kev, Kev uh, that, that's the medication, though, right? Uh, well, maybe. Uh, they they think that uh it might be pre Parkinson's, but yeah. Oh, might, oh so, really? Yeah, like some days I yeah I can't even hold a glass of water. Some days. Oh my God. Could be concussions. I had three of them. So yeah, I, yeah. Oh, they, shoot, I I had four, man. Yeah, they don't I, know yeah, for I, sure. And Kev, I, I know like it was like once, you know, every four or five months, I, I told you I used to get the uh, ocular migraine where I'd see color yeah. in my eyes. Well, now it's like once every six or seven days. That's concussion related. Well, yeah, I, 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 I was the idiot that put the head down and had the hel helmet to helmet mm -hmm. Yeah, right. playing football. Yeah, that was genius. How, how, well, when you get one of those, how do you, get a, how do, you deal with it? I, 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 I mean, I, to me, I think it's. And I, I'm probably wrong, but at least as a placebo, I think it's because I'm not hydrated enough. So I'll just drink a bunch of water and then it goes away. I don't know whether that's it or not. No, hydration is a big part of getting rid of migraines. Yeah, I, I just because uh, I drink a lot of water like uh -huh. I'm, I'm drinking it now. Yeah. But, you know, I guess my body's used to being very saturated. And when I don't drink as much, I mean, my body starts to say, hey. Do you have to go in a dark room? Um, I, I don't have to go in a dark room, but I'll I'll I'll, I'll make sure my lights are to, uh, out. You know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and Kev, I got to tell you this too. This speaking of which, I almost always have lights out. I I hate lights. Okay. I I mean I almost always like there's a specific light in my kitchen 
that's so annoying to me. It's one of those overheads that really beam down. I never turned it on. Wow. Well, that saves you electricity, Bill. Well, I, 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 I exactly. That's a bonus too. But I, I don't like lights as it is. But well, yeah, so if it get, behind if it you, is that natural sunlight coming in then? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, you know, from the blinds. Yeah, there's there is not one single light on at all. The only the, what you're seeing right now is probably off my screen. Yeah, the uh, the screen that I have. But yeah, you know, that's it. I I I try to use as little light as possible, except when I'm using sharp objects. I like to have light. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> uh, Kev, are you ready for this week's top three? I think so. Just when you thought they couldn't count any higher, it's Tuttle and Klein's top three. Okay. Um, top three women that aren't considered world-class beauties, but you find hot. Oh my God. This is awesome. Now, not the obvious ones. I mean, no supermodels, nobody from Victoria's Secret, no sports illustrated swimsuit models, you know, Angelina Jolie, Jessica Alba, uh, Scarlett Johansson, too obvious. We're talking about underrated world-class beauties yeah i'm just i i every time i watch saturday night live i'm like god i love heidi gardner oh really that that's kind of what you're talking about right underrated oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 i yeah, love they, heidi gardner she's awesome i love and, and i think she's stunning like if she had a, a fan club uh you know of guys who drooled over her it wouldn't be that huge but you would be one of them oh yeah for sure well, and, and I know she's from Kansas City, so that's why we're looking at Helms up there. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Gwyneth Paltrow has been replaced. No, 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 no. Gwyneth can never be replaced. Um, <laughs> let's see. Uh, so, yeah, Heidi Gardner comes to mind. Um, uh, uh, I, I, I guess may, maybe because I'm watching The Office now, but uh, Jenna Fisher. Jenna Fisher. Pam from yeah. The Office. You yeah. like Pam. Okay. Yeah, she's cute. She's cute. And mm-hmm. then, uh, hmm. They wouldn't be on any posters in a college kid's uh, dorm room. However, they do it for you. Yeah. I think that Megan the Stallion, she wouldn't, she would probably be some, on somebody's oh, poster. Yeah. She, yeah, she'd be on a poster. Okay. Uh, she's, from, she's from Houston. I know. I know. I, I love her. I love her music. I She's super cool to me. Uh, let's see. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Super cool to you. Do you know her? No, I don't. I don't, but I- Oh, I, I, no, no, no. super cool to me. Right. Yeah, it's not, not like you've met her and she's really cool to you. It's just like to you, you think she's super cool. Yeah, I mean, I like her music. I like her message. I, I love the way she looks. Uh, I mean, she's very open about her depression and uh, and all, all the things that she has to go through uh, to be a superstar like she is. But yeah, I, I appreciate that about her. I like that about her. Uh, I'm going to give, I'll let you have it. You can have it. Okay. Right. You got Megan Stallion. You got it. Houston girl. Who you got? Uh, Kev, I think you know this one, too. I've always had a weird thing for Beverly D'Angelo. Oh, yeah, the overbite. The, she had the she had the overbite. And, you know, the shower scene from the first vacation movie, it's still stuck in my head as a young youngster. Uh-huh. I was, I was shocked. I was like, damn, that is hot. She is hot. Yeah. Yeah, so I always, I always had a thing. Now, this is from the 80s. I mean, she's turned out to be a fucking pterodactyl since then. <laughs> yeah. and, and again, you know, I, I, I'm not making fun of her aging. I mean, we all, you know, get older. But, you know, when you're injecting all this shit in your face yeah, and, and doing all that stuff. I mean, here, here she was. I mean, look at this. Here On one side here, Kevin's got a picture of her when she was in vacation. And then a recent... Whoa! <laughs> whoa, hey! <laughs> a, a recent picture of her and that's not her age that's uh her plastic surgeon must have been drunk that day yeah that's cosmetic stuff right there yeah uh my number two kevin I, i've gotta give uh i gotta give props to uh comedian ali wong okay do you know her yes i do there's something about her uh-huh and I can't explain it. There's something about her that is really dynamite sexy. She's got a, she's got like a guy's sense of humor. Yeah. If you've ever watched her comedy act, she's a great guy's locker room comedian. And she's just very beautiful and pretty and shit like that. You know? Yeah. I, there, there's just something about her that I, you know. And, and 
and having Heidi Gardner at the top of my list, I think maybe it is because of the sense of senses of humor that they have yeah. makes yeah. them even more. She's attractive, got, sexy. She's got a really dirty mind, and I love that. <laughs> well, then where would Nikki Glaser be on your? I don't like her as much. I like Whitney Cummings, though. Oh, do you really? Yeah, I, I would. I would have had Whitney Cummings on the list, but you know, everybody thinks she's hot. Okay. So I don't have her on the list. Um, and then my third one, and I don't know if you remember her because it's a different format, but when I, you know, I was doing top 40 radio, uh, she had a song that was pretty big, uh, Natalie and Brulia. I totally remember Natalie and Brulia. Yeah. Dark hair, the lips. Yeah. I mean, there, there's just something really like mega sexy about her. And, and I can remember meeting her and interviewing her. And I was just like, wow, you are ridiculous. You are ridi- that's ridi- that's ridiculous. It, it's kind of like Kev when we uh, <clears throat> the, the when we first started in 1996 together doing morning radio. Uh-huh. Our first big concert was uh, uh, 311 and no doubt, no doubt. Remember? Yes, I absolutely remember. And I remember uh, we were interviewing backstage Gwen Stefani. Yes, and I was like, holy shit, you're like a fucking perfect Barbie doll. Yeah. Yep. I was like, she looked perfect. You know what I'm saying? I do know what you're saying. Yeah. I think everybody uh, thought that she was, uh, she was very attractive, very pretty. Yeah. 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 I remember that. Do you, she you was remember super that? Cool. They, they were super cool also. Oh, they were awesome. And I don't know. It, it, it made me wonder um, because, you know, this is 1996. She's young, very new on the scene. She was just really, really fucking cool. Yeah. Like, like just, you know, look you in the eyes, talk with you, joke with you, you know, really at least act like she cared. Uh-huh. And maybe she did. I, I just wonder, though, if there's some point where if you and I, like, met her, you know, 20 years after that, maybe, you know, back in 2016 or something like that, would she still have been cool because she's just been a mega star for so long? She wouldn't remember our first meeting, but I think she would be cool. Uh just simply because we would introduce our, re- reintroduce ourselves and say, Hey, we spoke with you back in 1996. You're obviously doing well for yourself. We're still on radio. I think, I think she would still be cool. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and she would probably, cause I, Kev, that, that show was in Nashville in 1996. Right. And, uh, you know, we talked to Blake Shelton on the air and I told him about that. I said, I remember when your wife, you know, are they married? They are married. Yeah. Okay, uh, Gwen Stefani. I remember when you know she was part of No Doubt and Three Eleven No Doubt, the big concert in 1996. And I just remember she was perfect. And you know, Blake, Blake, uh, I remember him saying, "Yeah, I talked to a lot of people that went to that concert and said the same thing." <laughs> yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. She was just a girl, just a girl in the world. <laughs> She's walking in the spider web. Leave a message and I'll call you back. That's one of those songs I have to sing along with. It's a great song. And I and I think is one of the reasons that Eric and I split up is I used to sing that out loud. Oh, boy, it wasn't the George Strait song. <laughs> What's that? Uh, check yes or no? No, no. <laughs> I, I would sing that out loud when it came on. I'm logging in the spider and Eric would be like, what the fuck are you singing? <laughs> I mean, well, I, we, uh, we said that often when you were singing. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Didn't recognize the tune. So, <laughs> what the fuck are you singing? And what artist or composer will be suing you for singing it? <laughs> That's totally my life, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kevin Klein, what do you have, man? Uh, nothing. Uh, just, uh, you know, oh, oh, this week I am talking with Brandy Roderick. Want me to ask her anything? Andy Roderick. Okay, yeah. Kevin Kevin has another, for those of you who aren't aware, Kevin has a, uh, another podcast. It's called The Fuzzy Mike, and there's a new release every single Tuesday, and it's always fascinating and intriguing stuff. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, so. He, he finally gets some time without the, uh, you know, the anchor of me around his neck holding him down, the no, big bulldozer. No, it's not it at all. It, it uh, this fulfills my need to laugh, okay? Okay. The, the tunnel and client fulfills my need to laugh. The fuzzy mic, it, it fulfills my need to, to be cathartic. It, it, it's, a, it's a cathartic outlet for me because of the mental health that I deal with. I get you know? it. And that's what the focus is on that is what, the mental well, What health. are you going to be doing with Brandy Roderick? Does well, she ha- had some issues? 
Yes. Yeah. She actually wrote a book uh, when she was uh, a Playboy Playmate about how to navigate uh, stardom and how to uh, it, it's basically a how to for young women uh, to enter the world with more confidence and uh, and, and higher self-esteem because she had very, very low self-esteem, believe it or not. That's crazy. Yeah, I know. Right. That's going to be a good one. I'm, I can't wait for that. So that's uh, by the time you're watching this or listening to this, it's out right now. Fuzzy might go search on all the platforms for that. It's always really, really good stuff. Uh, also, do us a favor and please like, follow, download, subscribe, give us a rating, do all that stuff for us. It's very, very important so we can grow the podcast. Also have merchandise available on our Facebook. This is really, really neat stuff that uh, Kevin's wife put together for us. Look at that sharp logo and how cool that stuff looks. I mean, it, Christmas is just around the corner. And uh, let me tell you this. There is nobody on your Christmas list that wouldn't want one of these things stuffed in their fucking stocking. <laughs> Couldn't have said it better myself. So there you go. Uh, all right, Kevin. That's been fun. It's been a blast, buddy. Have yourself a great week. You too, man. Have a good one, brother. That's it for this episode of the Tuttle and Klein Show. See you this Wednesday for an all-new episode. And you can get more Klein on his podcast, The Fuzzy Mike, with new episodes on Tuesday. Stay fuzzy, friends. And thanks for listening to the Tuttle and Klein Show. Yo. All right, take the yo out. <laughs>